Hello everybody, welcome back to 10 Minute Reviews. That crazy one was Freya, my fuzzy co-star. I'm Jason and we're bringing you today's video. As always guys, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. Again, we're just a small family channel. We just love to talk about books and we love to read books. So we're gonna keep doing this no matter what, but any support you guys might want to give us would be greatly appreciated. And by the way, thank you to our patrons. Actually starting to film some uh, exclusive content for you guys that should be going up sometime next week or so. Um, so today I want to talk about an author I haven't talked about before, which is kind of strange because I'm going to talk about book two. So uh, yeah, I want to talk about Chet Hardacre. I don't know if that's his pen name or if that's actually his name. Uh, and his book Dungeon Scumbag 2. I actually read one way back when, way back when, kind of forgot about it. And then uh, uh, somebody mentioned uh, two, so I went and took a look at it and went, holy crap, I've read number one. So I um, went ahead and read number two because if I finished number one, I obviously liked it and liked it enough. And uh, yeah, decided I'd go ahead and give it a quick review. So as always, guys, I'm going to talk about four things. I'm going to talk about the world, the characters, the plot, and the writing style. So this being book two, uh, I, may, I may give away a few spoilers from, from book one, but well, oh well. So the world. Well, this world, it's the world itself, the, the larger world itself, is a typical fantasy world. It's, it's your, I wouldn't even say middle evil or uh, midi, middle evil, medieval or middle, middle ages uh, adjacent time type of thing. It's, it's a pure fantasy world. Swords, sorcery, beasts, dwarves, elves, dark elves, a uh, little bit of everything. And the main part of this book occurs underground with their, I guess you could say, analog for dark elves. The, the way they put it within their mythology, they're just elves. That's all they are. They're just elves. They're just elves that worship a different god and, and were driven underground. And there's this kind of unofficial war between the, the under and the over. And uh, as the mythology comes out more and more and more throughout book two, you start to realize that, you know, that's... You, you almost start to sympathize with the underground dwellers just a little bit, which of course is the, of course is the point. Um, as far as the main character goes, the main character is Talum, and Talum is actually he was a noble, he's like a third-born son or something from up above, that was exiled. That's what they do. One of the things they do with criminals, they just they they throw them into the underground and let the underground deal with them. So he was exiled, that was uh, in book one, and was captured by the elves and, and that are matriarchal society. They're basically, guys, they're the analog drow. That's all they are. They're, they are the drow from, from every other fantasy setting. They're just this, is, this, this book or this series version of the drow. So he's captured by them and, and made to be a gladiator. Now, being a noble and, uh, and, and tra a trained knight and such like that, he, he has magic as well. Uh, plus, of course, his his weapons abilities, and he actually flourishes. He flourishes. He makes his own little plans, and theoretically, fights to be granted his freedom. Although, at the end of the the first book, he's just he's the champion. He's the champion. He's made a couple of uh, a small little harem of other other slaves, um, but he's definitely gaining power as he is he has gained some. Uh, some allies. So in book two, the plot of book two is really, it, it, it's, it's Talum's attempts basically to, to manipulate um, the, the, the underground society, the city as a whole into this, this war he wants to fight with the above ground, while at the same time manipulating parts of the city to the benefit of the allies that he has made down there, the allies and the, the, uh, the lovers and parts of his harem and so on and so forth from from a high priestess to the, the head of a house to, you know, other slaves and so on and so forth. So he's, he's, he's trying to, to get this, this battle, this war to, to start with, with the above ground. And he's getting more and more overt about it. And of course, we also still have the Grand Championship. Well, he's the Gladiator Champion, so the Grand Championship. I think they're called the Obsidian Games, which is between the champions of all the various houses, the individual champions of all the various houses. And uh, he has to, of course, prepare for that while he's doing his little scheming and his plotting and 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 so forth. And, and um, you know, as far as the writing style goes, you know, it's pretty, uh, I'll be honest, it's pretty cookie, cookie cutter, but it's gripping. It's gripping. It's interesting. Um, I definitely wanted to to 
know for the most part what occurs next. Uh, there is a little bit of a uh, little bit of the whole Deus Ex. You know, he he meets you know he meets somebody that has a skill that nobody else has, despite how obvious it is. Nobody else has has thought to use it for a certain thing until Talon comes along and sees it and is like, holy cow, we can use this for, you know, can you scale this up, make it big? I mean, it's, you know, a little bit obvious there. He, he introduces, he almost introduces a banking and currency system uh, um, that it's hard to believe a society that's a thousand years old hasn't had things like this pop up before. Uh, battle tactics. It's hard to believe that a society that's a thousand years old hasn't had some of this stuff pop up before. Uh, so there's a little bit of day, there's a little bit of a Deus Ex, and, and there's there's a lot of okay, yeah, I saw that coming, okay, I saw that coming. But yet, despite that, it's a fun series. It's a fun series. It's an interesting series. I actually really enjoy the characters quite a bit, and the character growth. I mean, that's that's uh, probably a reason I like slice of life books more than anything else. Well, I found the the the, um, the the individual plot pieces of this book very cookie cutter and, and obvious and kind of bland. The characters I thought were very interesting. Not Talon. Talon, actually, I'm not a huge fan of either way. But the other characters, his the the champion that he he that is kind of his his nemesis in book one and and in book two, um, the growth there I find very very interesting. This this knight that he captures from from the above ground world that that he uh, he tries to talk to and and such. I found that very very interesting. The the assassin, uh, not not a huge fan of the conversation the assa between the assassin and the knight, uh, just a little bit too, uh, a little bit too formulaic, I think. But but the assassin character themselves really liked him, really liked him. So the 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 little artificer girl that he he um, that he meets really liked her, and and they grow. They actually have grown just just through two books. Some of them, the ones that were introduced in the first book. And still appearing in the second book, they've grown. They've grown. They've changed. They've 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 um, moved forward, and I find it very 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 interesting. So, I think he writes his characters very very well. Main character, like I said, not a huge fan of, but the rest of them, I like. I like them a lot, and uh, and and I'm very much looking forward to book three. So, after you guys hit the like and subscribe buttons, guys, please go ahead and check out Dungeons Come Back Two. Well, that's by the way, that's the other thing. I'm not a huge fan of the title, for. All this of people trying to to get the um, you know get the harem lit and, and literatica type of stuff a little bit more mainstream. When you slap a title like that on there, it it actually hurts the cause more than helps it. So I'm not a huge fan of the title either. But the book itself, pretty good, pretty good. I liked it. So definitely check it out, guys. Thank you everybody for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye now.